Hey guys, it's me, it's uh, Dr. Tro. I'm here to talk to you about another topic from a user picked on the Facebook uh, support group, Rockland and Bringing Weight Loss. Uh, the topic that we're gonna be discussing today is what happens to blood tests like cholesterol, liver enzymes, uh, uric acid, ferritin, when you start a ketogenic diet or a very low carb diet? So that's the, uh, the questions we're gonna answer is what happens to cholesterol? What happens to the liver enzymes? What happens to the uric acid? What happens to the ferritin? What happens to the high sensitivity CRP? And uh, those are the issues we're gonna discuss. So the first thing I wanna talk about is there's findings that happen early in a very low carb uh, ketogenic diet and there's later findings that happen uh, early on. Uh, most people who start a ketogenic diet start eating a lot of fat, a lot of protein. They cut out the, the carbohydrates, but the relative intake is actually still pretty high. And as time goes on and the longer they stay on the diet, what, what they'll end up telling me is that they're just not as hungry, particularly after about six to eight weeks, they're just not as hungry. And so after two to three months, uh, after their body is now able to make ketones and use ketones, make free fatty acids, use free fatty acids, and the fat oxidation is high, after this two month period is when we see changes in the lab work. In the lab work. So what happens initially? Well, initially actually the triglycerides go up. Uh, when the fat intake goes up, when you start eating a lot of fat, the triglycerides will go up. But what happens is over time, and particularly after the, after the first month, those triglyceride levels will come down. And if you look at the literature for any uh, low carb or uh, very low carb ketogenic diet, that's longer than three months, triglycerides are statistically significantly lower than baseline. And they're lower than other diets like low fat diets. In fact, one of the most powerful things a very low carb ketogenic diet can do in the long term is really reduce those triglycerides. So that's the first thing to pay attention to. In the beginning, it may actually go up. So if you happen to get a blood test one month in, you may see that it may rise. Uh, if you have a history of familial hypertriglyceridemia, you have to pay attention to that. That's something you may want to manage in the first month when it goes up. But then eventually after a month, two months, it comes down, it goes way down. Uh, so that's one of the most important things. The other thing that we look at on the cholesterol uh, lab work is the HDL. Now, HDL happens to be one of the best markers for cardiovascular health. It's been termed healthy cholesterol, um, but it's not necessarily the case all the time. Basically, the bottom line is it's, it's associated with better health. And uh, as you increase good fats on a low carb ketogenic diet, we'll also see that HDL rise. So this happens to be a favorable prognostic indicator. So that's something you see typically after three months, sometimes sooner, sometimes later. Now, everybody cares about LDL. Uh, and this is what I tell most patients. When you're first starting a uh, ketogenic diet, the first two months, the LDL may actually rise. Um, and that has to do with the fact that you're eating uh, kind of fatty foods and, and more saturated fats. And, and, but what I typically see is after the first several months, as the food intake goes down, as energy levels go up, you know, and as the weight loss goes down, that LDL actually typically drops. About one third to one half, I see the LDL go down. Uh, and about another one third of the LDL will stay the same. And depending on the diet and the individual kind of uh, uh, genetics, the LDL may actually go up. Um, and well, what do I think about that medically? I think that in an ideal scenario, everyone's LDL will be controlled, either the same or down. But you have to weigh the pros and the cons. If you're on a very low carb ketogenic diet and you have diabetes and your diabetes resolves and you lose a ton of weight, well, then maybe accepting a small increase in LDL is perfectly acceptable. Uh, and, I, and I do feel that it is. And if perhaps you're on a very low carb ketogenic diet and your LDL goes up and maybe you haven't lost any weight, uh, then maybe it's not the right approach for you. Maybe you should try a different approach. So I think it really depends on what the trade off is. If this new lifestyle is one that fits with you, you can maintain it lifelong and your you know, liver disease is resolved or your diabetes is resolved and you've lost significant weight, then I say stick with the way of eating, uh, despite a small increase in risk from a nominally increased LDL. But otherwise, I think uh, you know, if you're seeing no benefit from a ketogenic diet, which is rarely the case in my clinical uh, practice, uh, then you know, if you're not seeing any benefit in weight loss, then why, why do it? Uh, why do it if your cholesterol is going up? So that's how I feel about LDL. The other things to take note about liver enzymes, everybody asks me about liver enzymes. So this is what you should know. Uh, elevated liver enzymes are caused by two, and fatty liver disease essentially, elevated liver enzymes and fatty liver disease are caused by two major issues. One is being overfed and the other is being fructose. So whether you're overfed and eating a lot of fat or whether you're overfed and eating a lot of sugar, both of these can cause, uh, can cause uh, liver fat to accumulate, to have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or, or non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. The bottom line is this. Um, in the first couple of weeks, within two months, on a strict, very low carb ketogenic diet, I have experienced a 100% resolution of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease in patients that are losing weight and stick to the diet. So in, in patients, uh, I've seen it in as little as five or 10 pounds of weight loss in the first two months. If they're strictly cutting out all sugar and all fructose, they will see a resolution of their uh, liver enzymes. And when we confirm it on ultrasound, we see a resolution of the liver fat. So the liver enzymes go down. It happens very quickly, usually within the first two months. So that's what happens with liver enzymes. The other questions people ask me about is uric acid. Some patients may have gout. 
What actually happens with uric acid on a very low carb ketogenic diet is it actually goes up in the first two months before it comes down. So uh, sometimes if I have a patient who has a history of gout, I may manage that with uh, medications in the first two months. And then afterwards, I, I uniformly take them all off. The uric acids drop to lower than they've ever been. And in particular with weight loss, they really drop lower than they've ever been. I think the key there, uh, just as the same it was for uh, LDL and just as the same it is for um, liver enzymes is if the diet makes you full and you start eating less and you're losing weight, you would definitely see improvement in all of these values. So that's something to pay attention to. And the last uh, two things that I get asked about is ferritin and high sensitivity CRP. So with ferritin, uh, ferritin is a marker of two things. It could be a marker of inflammation. It could be a marker of nutrition status. So let's say you started a very low carbohydrate ketogenic diet and you see a slight bump in your ferritin. I wouldn't be worried about it at all. Um, because you know, if you're eating a lot of uh, iron-based uh, foods like beef and lamb and chicken, uh, what happens is, is the ferritin goes up. And what I find is after two months, it starts settling down and dropping back down. So because it's a dual marker of, of inflammation and nutritional status, uh, it can actually go up because you're eating beef and hearty foods. Uh, in the beginning, that ferritin level will go up and then it'll go back down. Now, high sensitivity, high sensitivity CRP is a marker of inflammation. And what it typically shows uh, is the uh, inflammatory process in your body. Uh, inflammation is linked with heart disease and chronic inflammation linked with chronic high insulin levels and chronic diabetes uh, is linked with poor outcomes, particularly poor cardiac outcomes. So what I find with uh, uh, high sensitivity CRP is it uniformly drops on a ketogenic diet. I very rarely seen it elevate, uh, but it is something I track. Um, I'd say probably 70 to 80% with weight loss of the high sensitivity CRP drops. And when you add in exercise, that goes up to like 80 or, or more percent. Very few people I've seen actually have the CRP go up on a ketogenic diet. Um, so that, that's just uh, something in my own clinical practice. Okay, so let's just do a quick recap. Cholesterol, what do we see? We see the triglycerides go down. Sometimes it can go up before it goes down, but uniformly and eventually it goes down. HDL tends to go up. LDL uh, has a mixed result. Sometimes it goes down. Most of the time it stays put. Some of the time it can increase. Uh, uric acid goes up before it goes down. Uh, ferritin, again, goes up before it goes down. And CRP, I get mixed results. Most of the time it goes down. Some of the time it stays put or very few percent of the time it goes up. Okay, so that basically explains blood test on a ketogenic diet. I hope uh, this was helpful. And just uh, go on the Facebook group and ask your next question and I'll be happy to answer it.